Welcome back to Elizabeth Plants. I'm Elizabeth and today we're finally gonna have the conversation about my pest control journey. So if you're a frequent watcher, you might know that I've been battling pests behind the scenes all winter. And I think a little bit before winter and then a little bit into the spring. And I've hinted at it and showed like some pest damage on leaves and talked about, you know, pest problems, but I haven't actually talked to you guys about my pest problems or how I solved them. And I have mentioned that I've been wanting to do that. I just haven't had a chance to sit down and make this video and kind of gather my thoughts on it and such like that until today. So essentially I'm going to walk you through how I discovered I had a pest problem, what pests I discovered, and how I got rid of them. Now this is a video on my experience and my journey, what worked for me. This is not necessarily a how to discover pests on your plants um, or a how to treat pests on your plants. This is just what worked for me. These tips may also work for you, but they may not. I wanna state that I live in, well, when I had this pest problem, I lived in the Midwest in Michigan, and I lived in an apartment complex that was sealed off. There's no like windows. I don't have access to a yard or a balcony or anything like that. So take that into consideration when absorbing this information. So naturally, the first thing that had to happen for me to work through my pest problem was for me to discover that I had a pest problem. And there were three primary pests that played a role in this journey, and that is thrips, spider mites, and fungus gnats. Now I knew that, like I've had fungus gnats on and off pretty much my entire plant process, like, you know, that's just a normal one. They come and they go. Um, and I have got it down pretty much to a science how I get rid of those guys. Yes and no, I've, those have been a problem, but not really during this process. They were more of a nuisance. But I still want to mention them here because having uh, three pests at once on a plant can be pretty daunting, even if one of them is just fungus gnats. Spider mites is a frequent comer into this particular apartment, though I've never had them before this apartment. I think that is in part due to the low humidity in my current apartment complex. It is so difficult to get the humidity up, especially since none of my windows open. Uh, and it's pretty airtight. It's a brand new building, like five years old max. So I think that that plays a huge role and I tend to get like a huge influx of spider mites in the winter. And this is when I was having my problem. So naturally it just happened. So not only was it being battled, you know, on and off with the fungus gnats, I also had spider mites and then I discovered thrips. And I actually discovered thrips while filming and did not know that I had discovered thrips. While, or before I take my break, I do wanna show you, this is the plant that I discovered them on first. This is my um, Ficus elastica teneki. There's a, there was a white leaf on it, it was entirely white. And that's probably why I didn't notice the bugs because they're little white bugs, um, but it was just the leaf was covered. So I took it off, but these leaves, I don't even know if you'll be able to see because honestly, they're so little. I'll insert a picture of another plant that I discovered them on that was not in the greenhouse, but it's the same bug. Um, but I'll show you a close up of what they look like on that plant. You can see that on screen right now. Not really sure what they are. I've never had them before. They're just like little white beetle looking things. Um, so I will be also cleaning this guy off, but right now he's in quarantine and I'll do that at the end. Now, because I had not seen thrips before, I did not know it was thrips when I discovered it. I thought it was some kind of spider mite or um, honestly, I didn't think it was that big of a deal and think anything of it. And I did not take the necessary precautions because of my lack of knowledge. And that likely fed my thrips problem. So don't be me. Learn from my mistakes. The biggest mistake that I recognized after kind of in retrospect was that I didn't really do a ton to help the bugs when 
I discovered them. I figured I'd clean the plants down once with my normal solution, and then they would probably all go away because I was, I don't know, in denial. I didn't want to deal with it. I don't know. Um, but I discovered thrips. And then when that one little instance of cleaning didn't solve the problem and I started noticing a good chunk of my plants really suffering and I started seeing like, not like swarms, but like crowds of these pests on certain plants. Not all of my collection, but certain plants in my collection. And the first one I really, really, really noticed it on was my Monstera. Just a regular old Monstera, it wasn't very big. It's a Monstera that I no longer have. Now, after discovering this unusual pest, what I did was sort of quarantined the plants that had the thrips, but I, ha I made another big mistake here. And uh, I Googled it, discovered it was thrips, and was like, I can handle this. This is no big deal. I'll just quarantine the plant a little bit, and I don't even have to cut off the leaves. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. I should have just trimmed the plants down as much as I could that had the thrips. However, it wasn't. Um, I was more worried about the spider mites that I knew were incoming in the winter and fungus gnats. So I'm actually gonna start with the spider mites and fungus gnats because the way I work through those is a lot simpler than the way I work through thrips. That's a bigger story. Um, so fungus gnats, how do I handle fungus gnats? The first thing I do is yellow sticky traps. Uh, I keep like a big sheet of the yellow stickies and I trim them up to fit into the pot that they need to go in. And then I just kind of tuck them in the dirt or if I have like a, a like a holder for them or something, I'll stick that in the dirt um, and I'll just kind of leave them until they look nasty and then I toss them and either replace them or not. This is just kind of to get the adult plant uh, bugs Though I worry a little bit less about the adults than I worry about the larva because the larva is in the soil eating my plant roots and that's not cool. So really the only thing I do other than the yellow sticky like catchers is a mixture of approximately 50-50, maybe like 30 to 50, 50 to 80. Um, with hydrogen peroxide being the lower half of that ratio and um, just water, just regular old water. So it's roughly 50-50. I don't actually measure it out strictly. Um, and every once in a while, particularly if I notice an infestation, I'll water my soil plants with that mixture. If the infestation is, like I'm starting to notice them swarm around my face, like if they're starting to be a bit of a nuisance, I'll try and do that every other watering-ish, and I'll also do the sticky notes. I do that and they go away pretty quickly. Now the spider mites, I know how to get rid of them, I'm just not very good at being consistent. So do what I say, not what I do, I'm working on it. Now consistency is key with spider mites. So what I have done to kind of stage off my spider mite problem, which is huge and like awful in the winter, is number one, try and keep your humidity up. Uh, I can't, like I've tried so hard. I've had three humidifiers in this one room going at once and it's like maybe gotten up to 45, 50% in the winter. Uh, in the summer it's a little bit easier, but in the winter it's hard. Sometimes I'll just run my shower with like hot water to like try and steam up the apartment. Uh, but that's a little bit costly because then my electric uh, bill and my water bill goes up. So I don't love to do that, but that's an option. I don't have any windows in my bathroom, so I cannot put the plants with the problem in the bathroom. They wouldn't get any light. Um, so trying to raise the humidity is my num like step number one, trying to prevent spider mites is trying to keep my humidity up. In this apartment, for me, it's not super possible, but in other living arrangements that I've had, it's been possible, and hopefully in my next one, it will be possible. That's not gonna do it well enough. So what I will also do is try and keep my leaves clean. Trying to keep my plants as clean as possible is incredibly effective, probably the most effective. Now I do have quite a collection of alocasia and I usually lose them to spider mites in the winter and that's really unfortunate, it makes me sad. But what I will do is I will give special attention to the plants I know the spider mites will take 
love to because it's not my entire collection. In fact, it's not most of my collection. But it is like I know the plants that the spider mites love and so I try and focus on keeping those ones the cleanest. Uh, sometimes to the detriment of my other plants, but my other plants generally don't seem to notice. And then by keeping the uh, leaves clean, I use a certain mixture and I've talked about this mixture in other videos so I'll add a card to that here. I don't want to spend this entire video talking to you about the mixture if I've already made a video on it. But I clean my leaves off with that, which in theory gets rid of the spider mites. Now it would work better if it was hand in hand with higher humidity, but it's not. And that like is a short term solution. It would be a long term solution if I was able to be more consistent. Uh, so that's on me. And so that's my primary attack for the spider mites. And if I was consistent, it'd probably work just fine because when I have been consistent, it's worked just fine. I might also know if I notice the infestation is awful, like really, really, really bad, but I might have to cut off that leaf, which is really devastating if it's my only leaf on an alocasia, but I've done it and it's been more effective than leaving the leaf on. Now those two pests, I've been pretty successful at staving off to the best of my capabilities. But then when we threw thripes into the mixture, those things alone were not working. I knew that those methods worked for the spider mites and the fungus gnats. And so I was like, well, that's my go-to for the thripes, right? That should be, it'll work. And it didn't, it absolutely did not. And I did it in kind of, the same order because I was already doing it for the fungus gnats, and, fungus gnats and spider mites, but I tried the sticky traps, I tried cutting off infected leaves or isolating. I tried that a little bit too late, but I did try it and cutting off the leaves and isolating worked a little bit. It kind of kept the numbers of thripes down, but it did not get rid of them permanently. They kept coming back. So I tried cleaning the leaves and again, kept them off for a little bit, but somehow they kept coming back. And they kept coming back on a handful of my collection, but they were starting to branch out. And I was starting to panic because I have some very expensive plants. I've put a lot of money into my collection, quite frankly, and I really enjoy my plants. And when this was happening, plant prices were skyrocketing. And the plants that I was starting to lose would have been really expensive to replace. So, I was panicking a little bit. I kept trying to water with hydrogen peroxide every, you know, periodically. I definitely don't do that every time. I don't want to burn the roots, but I was trying to do that. And I had tried mosquito bits in the past with, with fungus gnats and I didn't like the mosquito bits, but I had some, so I tried mosquito bits. And I don't like it because I don't like the maintenance of it. I don't like the weight. If I make a tea, I have to wait for the tea. And then if I just put them on the soil, they get weird. And I just don't like that. If I mix them in the soil, then I have to repot my plant. Like, I just don't love them, but I tried them. Uh, and it, you know, like everything, worked for a little bit, but I didn't want to do it permanently. So it wasn't a permanent solution. And I really don't know that it was the bits that worked on their, on their own, or if it was just that I was throwing everything at my plants trying to help. And I was losing plants. Like my collection is significantly smaller as a result. I lost plants. Um, I lost a lot of alocasia. They, like all of these pests went hard on my alocasia collection, which is really sad because a lot of them were really awesome plants. Now, the next thing I tried was live bugs. So I had seen a video, Harley G ordered these live bugs, uh, lace wings, I believe, and she was gonna try them for her thripes and I did a bunch of research and I was like, this sounds like a great idea. It took me a long time to convince uh, Nick to be okay with the possibility of good bugs in the apartment. So I, I was gung-ho, I was gonna do that. And so I waited a little bit to any of the like neem oils and things like that that I had put on my plants um, because they did try neem oil as well, um, like with my cleaning mixture and also just spraying it on and neem oil wasn't doing it at all on its own. It certainly was not. So I, you know, made sure I waited until my collection had been, you know, clean enough, I think, from the neem oil so that I wasn't killing the good bugs. And then I ordered the good bugs and the first time they arrived, they were dead, I think. 
But the company was really awesome and sent me bugs again, and so I actually did some footage of these bugs and how I went around the house putting them on. Um, I just kind of added them to any plants with soil and kind of dusted the soil with them and hoped for the best. There, it was maybe a couple of weeks later, I did see those bugs, but like I saw one that was larger, so I knew that they were still alive and still growing, but my pest problem was getting really bad. These bugs were not working, and I had only seen one large one. I had like investigated the plants, and I couldn't find them anywhere, and maybe they were still alive and maybe they were working, but I was not sitting there waiting to find out uh, the hard way. So unfortunately, I kind of ditched the live bug thing and I was hesitant to use diatomaceous earth. So it was my last ditch effort. And the reason I was hesitant to use it is because of how messy it is and I have cats. I don't love the way it looks on the leaves and I knew putting it on the soil was not going to be enough, or even just the stems, that was not going to be enough. My pest problem was on the leaves, at least the visible part of it. But I finally broke down and used diatomaceous earth, and I'm happy to say that I have been pest-free since. It did not take long, and I have gone, granted, very hard with the diatomaceous earth, but it worked. So how did I use it? Well, I went hard and I tried it in all of the ways. So any plant that had soil, I dusted the soil. Any plant that had a problem, I dusted the bottom and the top of the leaves. And then everywhere where there was a plant nearby with a problem, I would do the same with all of the plants nearby. So most of the plants in this room got diatomaceous earth. And then any plant that showed either spider mites or thrips out in the other parts of the apartment, got dusted as well. Now the first way I went about it because I hated the way the dust looked is I had learned that you could make like a water mixture and just spray your plants. And I was like, that'll be a good way to make it even. And I knew that the diatomaceous earth was not fun, like it's not gonna work if it's wet. So I kind of just decided that that was okay. I'd wait for it to dry and I just would not water my plants in the shower anymore. I would either bottom water or I would pour it directly into the soil with like a, a pitcher or something. And that was, that was just my life now. And at least until the problem was gone and that worked really well. I just got really tired of wait, like making the water mixture and my squirt guns were all like kind of getting clogged and I also like wanted my mister back so I didn't want to use my mister so it just like making the water mixture while it was working was a bit of a pain so I decided to get one of those like powder sprayer thingies and then while I was waiting for the power sprayer thingy uh, so I used a little parmesan shaker for a while and that was sufficient for a while but I mean it was small so it didn't hold much and I started just you know, spraying everything down. Um, and then once the pro, and I started tossing plants that were replaceable, um, that had a major problem. That included my Monstera. My Monstera was the biggest problem plant. Uh, and my Jose Bono was also really bad, like really, really, really bad. But I was not about to have to replace my Jose Bono if I didn't have to. So I would chop off leaves or parts of the leaves and I tried really hard to just keep him separate and doing things with him instead of tossing him. Those were two really bad plants. Now the pest problem started going away, so I started watering my plants in the tub again, and then just, actually what would happen is because I would put on the diatomaceous earth, it wouldn't rinse off entirely in one watering, um, like top watering, it would, you know, get wet and not be functional for a little bit. And then once it dried, it would leave kind of like a residue on the leaves. And that was still functioning just fine. So really that's kind of where I am at with it. I haven't seen a thripe in a long, long, long time. And I've been able to kind of just, if I start seeing spider mites, I, you know, do a diatomaceous earth coating. Usually that's hel that helps until I rinse that plant off. 
And really that's kind of the end of my pest journey. That's where I'm at now. That's what I plan to continue doing because it works for me. If you want me to make a more in-depth video about diatomaceous earth or about certain pest control protocols, let me know. I will, I, I'm open to making a, like a how-to video on these pest controls, but first I just wanted to tell my story because I've been kind of hiding it, not, not on purpose. I just didn't know what was gonna work. So I didn't wanna give advice that wasn't gonna work. So yeah, let me know if you'd like a more in-depth how to handle these certain pests. I'd be happy to do that. Or like a more in-depth video on diatomaceous earth. I'd be happy to do that. How to use um, hydrogen peroxide. Be happy to do that. Yeah, I'd be down to make these videos. Uh, just let me know if you're interested, if that's something you'd even wanna see. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, if you like this kind of storytelling video, give this video a like, thumbs up it, um, and then subscribe and ring the bell to see more of my houseplant content. I will see you next time.